though, I always like to ask a little fun, little icebreaker. We got a fun audience today, it looks like. So uh, we're going to talk about video prospecting. So I call this framework the video prospecting advantage. Um, if you haven't been to one of my webinars before, welcome. What I like to do in these webinars is a couple things. I like to you know, kind of start high level with the why behind stuff. I'll certainly get to tactics. We're gonna talk about examples of videos today. I have a little workbook that I've put together for you guys that I'll share towards the end. For anyone that's gonna ask, yes, the webinar, this is recorded. I'll send out a replay in a couple of days. You'll have all of that kind of stuff. So um, what will help you get the most out of this is just to engage. You guys are doing a great job of this in the chat. If you got questions, ask them. Uh, make sure if you have a specific question related to what we're talking about today, the Q&A button at the bottom of Zoom, that's a place that will kind of segment a lot of those for me to take a look at. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's dig in. So let's first look at if we step back, sort of the problem, the state of the union when it comes to outbound right now. One of the things that's super tough is that your prospects inboxes look a lot like what I'm showing you there on the right. Those are cold emails that I've tagged in my email inbox, just because I like to save all of them. My wife, Sarah, she used to work alongside of me in the business as well. So if you see her name in there, that's, that's why. But what do you guys notice about all of the subject lines of those emails? Help me out in the chat. What do you guys notice about the subject lines of these emails? Maybe the first couple words of the emails. Yeah, not human, crowded, seller-centric, boring, long, not compelling, wordy. Yeah, lots of questions, maybe a little too pushy. <laughs> Eddie says, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they all kind of blend together. So that's really the first problem that we have in setting appointments. So thank you, Tracy, thank you, Niev. So whether our job is as a full cycle salesperson, so an account executive or someone, you know, managing the entire sales process from open to close, or if you're a BDR, SDR, we're all dealing with the same problem. We're really competing against the noise in that person's inbox. The average office professional gets 120 emails per day. I don't know, this part seemed a little high to me. And they said only response to 25% of them. I thought that was a little generous. I think it's probably less than that. But the point being is that your prospects are getting a ton of emails. And if they're a busy executive, they might get hundreds of cold emails per day at a Fortune 1000. Even VP and C-level folks in mid-market companies, they get hundreds of cold emails on a monthly basis. So our job becomes, how do we stick out? How do we differentiate? And video is one of the ways that we can do it. But if you haven't sent videos before, I don't know about you, the very first time that I recorded a video for LinkedIn was, was a big deal. Uh, the very first webinar that I ran with Blissful Prospecting was in 2020, right when COVID happened. And uh, I remember, you know, Sarah, my wife, we were running our business at the time together. And I was like, I think I want to host a webinar because COVID happened. And I was like, I think you know, salespeople, I think they need some ideas right now on how to do outbound. And I remember being just a nervous wreck to be on video live because I hadn't really produced a lot of videos up until that point. You know, I had a podcast and you know, I've done a lot of written content, but the video part was pretty nerve wracking for me. And I remember it was a big deal just for us to get, you know, 50 people, you know, to show up to something. So video can be very intimidating. It's a medium that not a lot of people are very used to. Um, it could be super time intensive. So the solution, what we want to do, and what you're looking at there on the right is a technique that I'm going to share with you today. The way you can create personalized gifts. So sh really shortened, you know, videos that are working pretty well for us. But the solution to all of this noise is really to humanize yourself. A lot of our prospecting right now, and I'm assuming most of you are inside salespeople. And if you're an outside salesperson, my guess is that you're probably doing a lot of what an inside salesperson might do. You might not be traveling every day and meeting people in person. You're doing a hybrid of in-person visits. And a lot of the challenge in a remote environment, a virtual environment, is prospects just see a name and a company name come through on email. They don't see your face. 
So they don't look at you like you're human. They look at you as just an email that came into their inbox. So humanizing ourselves is a really, really big thing that we can do. The other part that's really interesting too that we can break through the clutter is to add visual elements to our cold emails to maybe show them a problem that they didn't know existed or in a way that they've never seen before. It's like doing a webinar here. Imagine if I was doing a tele, I don't know if people call them teleconferences these days, but I'm gonna say back in the day, I'm not like super old, I'm 33, just turned 33 a couple of weeks ago. Um, we used to do these audio conferences. You know, this is like maybe 10 years ago. You didn't really hop on a video call. We would do audio conferences. And one thing that was really tough is you could not visually see what the person was talking about like we are today in this webinar. So being able to visually show people things, it's really, really good to make the point. Um, and what we're gonna talk about today is keeping your video setup minimal and not aiming for perfection because the number one thing that you guys want us to land more meetings, all right? So that's what we're gonna focus on today. We're gonna do three kind of simple steps, but uh, I did wanna highlight, there's a guy, Matt Rogers, in our Outbound Squad community right now. He's having a ton of success with video and specifically with this little Any Thoughts GIF. Let me know in the chat, give me a yes or a no. Do you leverage Any Thoughts? Do you leverage those bump emails where you bump the, email that you send a couple days later and you put any thoughts, give me a yes or a no in the chat. This is, I don't know why it's such a controversial, you know, kind of topic these days. People either like to use that or they think it's really a waste of the prospect's time or spammy or whatever it might be. But any thoughts, that's a really good bump email. What Matt's using right now is instead of using the words, any thoughts, he recorded a GIF of himself and I'll show you guys how to do that today where he has a whiteboard and he put any thoughts in there. He's got a 60% reply rate to this right now. Yeah, Miriam says, I hate it. I'm all about what works and what doesn't. I'm okay with using a technique or strategy that I don't particularly care for, or maybe that wouldn't work on me. I care more about what works on the prospect. What do prospects think of this technique? That's what I care about most. So yeah, if this is not your style, <laughs> uh, what I would suggest is be open-minded enough to try it. Let the data tell you. Exactly, Miriam. <laughs> yeah. Let the data tell you whether it'll work or not. Yeah. Lisa said, I received one from you today. So we must be talking to you about Outbound Squad then, Lisa. Um, cool. All right. So let's talk about kind of conceptually what we're going to dig into today. So there's three simple steps to using video. One, I'm gonna talk about leveraging simple tools. Everyone wants to know about the tools, the you know, lighting, all that kind of stuff. We're gonna talk about how to strategically time your videos and then quality over quantity. So the strategically timing piece is super important when you send videos and who you decide to send videos to is just as important as what is in the video the message, what you say, that sort of stuff. And everything I'm gonna share with you today, besides that any thoughts gift, all of this is really a quality over quantity approach. So let's dig in. Let's talk about tools first. So lighting, um, it's important. I think that people can overthink, you know, this piece, but with lighting, it can make a difference here. I mean, that's, that's no lighting there on the left. Um, I have some like professional, you know, kind of lighting here. And then um, the one on the right obviously looks a little bit better than the one on the left. So I, I don't want you to overthink the lighting piece, but it is important. So the most basic thing that you can do, natural light is probably the best. So if you have a place in your apartment, your house, whatever it might be, natural lighting is probably going to be your best bet unless you want to spend some money on lights. But if for whatever the reason you're in a room or home office, or maybe you're working out of your bedroom, whatever it might be, um, a really simple ring light, just look on Amazon for ring lights. That'll get you everything that you need for lighting. That is the extent of how professional it needs to be when it comes to lighting. So that's the first piece. And let me know as I'm going through this, if you guys have any questions on the equipment piece, if anything comes up, feel free to let me know. And I'm looking at the 
Q&A. Okay, so uh, Chin, you asked, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name correct. You said, do you recommend a natural background or an image? Um, you guys, spoiler alert, that's a tarp, okay? It's not even a green screen. It's a tarp that looks like a brick, okay? <laughs> so um, I use that. I just have some, you know, kind of stands. Actually, I, I could show you guys if you want. Here, let me, let me do this. This will maybe like totally spoil it for all of you guys. This is what I got going on. There's a tarp, you know, kind of there. And I'm just in my home office. There's some lighting there. You do not need that type of lighting that I have there. It is quote unquote professional. It's not super like expensive. I think we spent 150 bucks, you know, on the lights. So background, your bedroom background is totally okay. What you don't want is if you're in your bedroom and you have like a bed that's not made and a bunch of laundry like sitting around and it looks like a complete mess, you know, like let's exercise some common sense here. So we don't need to have a fancy background or anything like that. But um, yeah, that's that's sort of, that's my setup here. Yeah. So if any of you thought that that was real, I totally spoiled it for you. Um, here, let me get back. Okay, so lighting, let's not overthink it. Yeah, if you have some good fabric backgrounds, you could do that, but you guys, what you have is probably totally okay, all right? Camera is important as well, but again, you probably have something built into your laptop that's decent if you have a Mac. If you got a PC, Lord help you. I don't, I don't know what to do to help you. You have a lot of other problems that I can't help you with. <laughs> so um, with, a, with a Mac, you're probably good to go. This is the webcam that I use here on the left. I think it's 80 bucks, 90 bucks, 100 bucks, something like that. If, if your webcam on your computer, which no offense to the PCs out there, but uh, it tends to not be as good as the stuff on the MacBooks. So if you need something and it doesn't have HD or the ability to do 1080p, just invest in a webcam. You know, it can make a difference on first impression. This is literally it when it comes to like equipment and what you need and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm just looking at the chat here. Um, Moaz, you said, how about using the camera on your phone? You could do that, but the workflow is going to be really slow if you have to record the videos from your phone and then transfer it to your computer and then send them. All of the tools you're going to want to use through your computer. <laughs> Robin says that hurts, but true about PC users. Um, okay, cool. This is another really important thing too. So equally important to the camera is the camera height and the camera angle. So what you can see here is the difference between these two angles. Same lighting, same camera, and you can see a huge difference. I mean, look at the one on the left. I look like, I feel like I look five years older than I actually am. <laughs> look at those wrinkles under my eyes <laughs> on the one on the left. Just basic like angle of the camera to not like point up or to be down here. I want it eye level. So I want to be looking into the camera at eye level. So one of the things that I do is, uh, well, I can't really show you actually. So below my, I have a laptop here on my right. And then I have a second monitor here I'm using in front of me. The camera I put on my second monitor. If you don't have that situation, I literally, on my laptop here on the right, I have books stacked underneath a laptop stand. That's it. That's how rough my setup is and how much it just does not matter. What you want to do is stack up your laptop if you're using that camera. Get the laptop camera eye level and like you're probably good to go. Yeah, empty cardboard boxes. Yeah, so whatever you got to do. Um, you don't need to invest in a bunch of fancy tools. The content, you guys, is the most important part. The delivery, your energy, all of that kind of stuff is way more important. But I have to answer these questions because people always ask me about equipment. Okay. Now, in terms of tools, and let me know. I'm keeping my eye on the questions. Let me know if there's any questions you guys have on equipment. So in terms of tools, these are sort of my three favorites. There are a lot of you know other ones that you could include. 
Yeah, so I'm seeing recommendations, dub.com, Vine, uh, you know, Vineyard, Bloom. Dude, whatever you want to use, I don't really care. If you need recommendations, these are ones that I like personally. Uh, none of them are sponsors or anything like that. So uh, I like Vidyard and Drift personally. Bomb Bomb's really good. I have not used personally used Bomb Bomb before, but it's a really good tool as well. Just get a tool. Most of them are free. Vidyard and Drift have a free version. I use the free version. I don't pay for the video tool. Yeah, I don't have any experience with Git except Frederick, but any of the tools people are throwing into the chat are probably good to go. Okay. That's the tooling, okay? Let's not overthink the tools. I need some decent lighting. Go for natural lighting if you need to. I mean, you could record the videos outside. I don't know how cold it is. It's starting to warm up a little here in Vancouver, Washington, where I'm at. But um, so lighting, decent camera, camera angle. Let's get some of the free software. We're GDG, good to go, okay? All right, let's talk about strategically timing your videos, all right? So let me grab the screen here. Okay, let's talk about when to use video. So the sequencing that I recommend, I'm gonna outline for, uh, outline for you here in a second. The thing that we are trying to avoid is a couple things. Let's talk about like why it's important to strategically record the videos and know where to place them in your sequence. Videos take a long time to record. So, on average, if you're really, really good, you can rip out a video in 60 to 90 seconds. And maybe there's 30 seconds of like embedding it and like doing all this other stuff. That's still two minutes of video if you're just straight cooking and you're super fast at this. Odds are it's gonna take you 10 or 15 minutes to put together a video. You're gonna to wanna to open up some tabs, do a little bit of research on the prospect and send a video. That means you can send four videos that are personalized in an entire hour, right? And for some of you, Hey, maybe that's 10 videos in an hour. Maybe it's 15 because you're really fast, but you start to hit a limit. And if, especially if you're a full cycle sales rep, you don't have a lot of time to mess around. So everything I'm gonna outline for you today follows this one simple principle. It's follow the engagement. If at all possible, I only wanna spend time recording a personalized video to prospects I know that are likely to engage with that video. So I'm only gonna spend time recording a personalized video if this person has either asked me for the video, they've engaged with something I've sent, because you know what has a 0% chance of success? You putting a video into an email that doesn't get opened. If the email doesn't get opened, they're not gonna watch your video. You just wasted all of that time recording a video for statistically half of people will not open any email that you send them. So what we want to do is really focus on the people that are willing to engage. So this sequence, how it fits into your current outbound approach, I want to talk to you about how it fits into that. Okay. All right. So, so here's what we want to do. So let's look at a dummy sequence. So this is how I recommend looking at this. This is the sequence structure that I recommend that you follow over a three week period. All right. So let's say that this is day one of your sequence here and then day three of your sequence here. So day one, let's say we're sending the first outreach on a Tuesday. Day three is going to come on a Thursday. So the typical sequencing structure I recommend looks like this. Phone, email, LinkedIn. And essentially what you're going to do here is when you get someone's voicemail, you're going to point the voicemail to the email. And then day three, we're gonna leverage a phone call and an email. These are based around three very simple principles when it comes to sequencing. And I'll talk about how video fits in here in a second. Multi-touch, so statistically to get in contact with prospects, we need 12 to 15 touches. It needs to be, oops, multi-channel. So 
So that's phone, you know, plus email, plus LinkedIn. And it needs to extend out over a period of time. So typically 20 to 30, 21 to 30 days. So those are kind of the principles behind this. So when we look at a typical week, here's what we want to do. So in that first triple touch where we give the prospect a phone call, we point the voicemail to the email, and then maybe we reach out on LinkedIn, we have an opportunity here to use what I call a hand razor email. I'm going to share some examples of what this looks like here in a second. So the hand raiser email, you're going to send an email to the prospect and you're going to ask them if they would like you to record a video for them. Okay. I'm going to give you an example of what that might sound like in the email. And then I'm going to show you an example. So the email could read, you know, Hey, David, many of the CX leaders that I talk to share with me that they're focused on one of two priorities right now. Uh, one customer loyalty. So providing world-class experiences to customers to drive repeat purchasing. And then two has to do with staffing. So how do we maintain our current staff without having to staff up and down around peak and seasonal periods? Which of these two is a bigger focus for you right now? One or two reply back. And I'll record a video sharing how companies like X, Y, and Z are tackling those challenges right now. That's the video I'm going to, or that's the email. I'm going to show you some examples here in a second. So you can see that again, but that's the general vibe. So in the email, I'm going to send something that says people like you are typically focused on these two things. Which one are you focused on? They're going to reply back and you may only have a two or 3% reply rate to that. But the percentage of people that watch that video is going to be astronomically high 80 plus percent in my experience. And if you're sending really good videos, there's a really high percentage of those people that are gonna uh, create a meeting as well. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm putting an email out to them. And the concept is, I'm not gonna send a video to you unless you ask me to send a video to you. So you're gonna send a lot fewer videos, but these are things that people have said, yes, I'd like to check it out. Okay, so that's one type of email that I'm gonna share with you. And Nick, you asked, what does the voicemail sound like that points to the email? So, hey, Nick, I just sent you an email with two of the priorities that I hear CX leaders focused on right now. And I had some ideas around staffing that I'm hearing a lot of concern around and also driving customer loyalty. No need to call me back. Subject line of that email is customer loyalty. My name's Jason. I'm with XYZ company. Again, the subject line of that email is customer loyalty. Go and check it out. That's the voicemail. So I'm just going to talk Nick about what's in that email that I'm sending. And I want to point them to the subject line. You guys notice the subject line I used was two words. So if I was sending that email, I actually might just use loyalty as a subject line. One to th three word, what I call boring subject lines work really, really well. So think about how you could take out all of the fluff of your emails and your subject lines and really just boil it down to the one, two, or three most important words in that email that are so insanely obvious what it is that that email is about. I worked with a client that sells an automated welding uh, solution. So it's hardware as a service, software as a service, and their top performing subject line was welders. That's all, that's all the subject line was had like a 90% plus open rate welders. That was it. So boring subject lines, uh, Miriam asks, what if the person doesn't pick up or does pick up the phone, then it's a cold call. Then you just do your normal call, Miriam. That's good. The prospect up the phone. You don't even have to record a video for him. You got him on the phone. All right. So that's the first type hand raiser. Now with LinkedIn, there's a lot of things you can do with LinkedIn. So sending a connection request is one of those things. You can you know, follow the prospect. You can like, comment on stuff that they've written. You can tag them in things. What I recommend on LinkedIn is when someone accepts your connection request, you send them a welcome video. Vidyard's really popularized this technique a ton. But when someone accepts your connection request, instead of sending a message back to them, you send a video to them. 
And I have some examples here that I'll share in a second, but that's a really good way to differentiate yourself. So instead of them accepting your connection request and you immediately pitching them like every other salesperson does, why don't you send them a, a quick you know, customized video? It's a really good way to stand out. So when we start to move to day three of our sequence, so let's say the prospect doesn't respond to any of that stuff. And by the way, I'm giving you suggestions on videos that you can send. I'm not suggesting that you send four videos to a prospect in a week, just so you know. <laughs> so uh, Blake, we're not gonna put this note into the connection request. We're only gonna send that video if they accept our connection request. Okay, so for your email, we talked about the any thoughts GIF. That's something that you can throw into that second email. Yeah, Alexander, you said, do you send immediately or with a delay after the connection request? Send it immediately. Why wait? Time's precious. I want to catch them when they're still on the platform. There's this thinking that what if your prospect accepts a connection request and you reach out to them within the hour that it's really thirsty or something and you should wait 48 hours. I've, I have not seen any data that supports that. Would you wait two days to respond to an email if the prospect replied to your cold email? You wouldn't wait two days. Like the quicker you respond to something, the higher the reply rate's gonna be. Reply as quickly as possible. Being thirsty, looking desperate, that's more about how you communicate with someone. The what that you say, not how quickly you communicate with someone. Yeah. You know what, Kristen? Kristen says, I've seen a prospect complain on a LinkedIn post about salespeople doing this. Well, you know what? If the prospect complains that a salesperson actually took the time to send something personalized to them, they're probably never gonna wanna meet with a salesperson that reaches out to them. <laughs> and that's something that we need to accept as salespeople is there's a certain percentage of people that will never respond to cold outreach. They just don't like it. And that's totally cool. That doesn't mean that it doesn't work or that you should stop doing it. But Kristen, I can you know, kind of tell from your response that you're like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> you know, not everyone's going to be um, okay with that. Okay. So you got the Andy Thoughts GIF. The other thing that you can do is only send videos to opens. So what you're going to do here is you're only going to send a video to someone that opens up that first email. So again, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to avoid sending a video to someone who doesn't open it. There's a certain percentage of people and you honestly, if, you know, if we're being real here, you don't even know if emails go through because the open rate is actually that sales loft or outreach or vanilla soft or whatever sales engagement tool you're using. It doesn't really accurately report the open rate. A lot of those opens are just their spam filter. So the, even the open rate statistic is not super accurate. It could be plus or minus 10 or 20% in my experience. So what we wanna do though, is we're only gonna send videos to people that have opened something that we've sent them. So let's, it, let's at least avoid the people that aren't opening the emails. Yeah, so there's been a lot of stuff, Chris, with that. So let's just look for engagement. Who's engaging with our stuff? So this is the high level framework. This is the when to use video. Before we get into examples, I want to pause. Share with me in the chat. I'd love to hear with you. What's your biggest takeaway so far? Let me know in the chat. What's the biggest takeaway that you have so far from what we've talked about? What's been most helpful? Yeah. Don't send the video cold. Yeah. Welcome video. Having a structured sequence. Always a good thing to have a structured sequence. Yeah. So Frederick, you have a really good point. I think a better question to ask instead of who should we send videos to, it's who should we not send videos to, right? One word subject lines. Oh, hey, Robin. Yeah. I only respond to prospects who are, are engaged. Permission-based videos, Tara. Yeah. Okay. You guys ready to look at some examples? I got four or five ready for you that I want to you know, kind of walk through and you guys feel free to pick my brain. Ask me about them all of that kind of stuff. Let me open these up. Yeah, and this is part of the worksheet that I'm gonna share with you by the end of the session today. 
All right. So you're going to get this worksheet. I will drop this into the chat for you. I don't want it to be distracting right now or for uh, anyone to you know kind of skip ahead, so to speak. But you're going to get this document afterwards. So it's got our stuff in here. I did forget to mention that video is a really great way to respond to objections too. You know, actually, sorry, before we dig into this, if there's another, I call these outbound magic tricks. One thing that we're seeing work really well too is if you made it habit to immediately call prospects that reply to your email, regardless of their reply. So unless it's take me off your list or some sort of really angry response, if you get in the habit of picking up the phone and calling them, we see a lot of reps in Outbound Squad convert a decent percentage of these into meetings, especially the not interested. Because when the prospect replies, think about when someone says not interested to you in a cold call, what do you normally do? You usually acknowledge the objection and, and try to offer some sort of alternative and you, you still try to talk with the prospect. Hopefully you do at least. When someone says not interested, you don't just say, okay, all right, bye and hang up. You usually don't give up that easily, right? Some, for some reason with email, when people respond not interested, we give up and we don't even reply to these people. So what you could do is if the prospect replies not interested, immediately pick up the phone and call them. If you get a voicemail, you can leave a voicemail and say, I'm about to send you a video and then reply with a video. Or if you send a video and the prospect responds back and they have a question, pick up the phone and call them. Things will happen so much faster. If you made a habit out of calling every single person that replies to your cold emails throughout the week, you might get an extra meeting every week if you did that, you know? So just something I wanna share with you that I kind of glossed over. Okay, so that's the sequence approach. Let's talk about the types of videos. So, and this I guess is technically a GIF, sort of the same thing. But one of the things that you can do, and, and again, there's directions in this. If you sign up for a free Drift video account and download the Chrome extension, literally all you have to do to record this Again, it sounds like there's several of you on the on the webinar today that have gotten one of these from me, you know? So I use this stuff a lot. You can literally record a five to seven second video and then just save it as a GIF. This is something that's different from the rest of the stuff that I'm gonna share with you. This is something that you can automate. So you can record this GIF and put it into your sequences. And this could be the two-step touch that's 48 hours after your first initial touch. That would be this one right here. That's something that you can automate each time. And I've seen some people do this with pretty good success. Everything else I'm about to share with you after this is very different from this. Awesome, Amanda. Yeah, she got a GIF, got a reply with an order yesterday. Okay, so let's talk about the hand raiser email, all right? So this is the approach that you can use to get prospects to ask you for the video, which will limit the time that you spend recording and sending videos that never get watched. So I'm gonna play part of, I can't play the entire video response. I'll play it up to the point uh, to where I start talking about the client that I'm working with. So here's the email right here. This is exactly what it looks like. Persona like you are typically focused on a couple of things. Priority drop, priority drop. Can you reply with a one or two? I'll make a quick custom video so I'm seeing your competitors do. That's it. You don't need to copy and paste this template. I would just use the formatting of it. Hey, typically when I talk to people like you, they tell me they're focused on a couple of these things or here's some of the problems that they share. This thing and this thing. Can you reply with a one or two? You guys notice how specific the call to action is? It's not which one are you dealing with. It's let me make this as easy to respond to as possible by, by literally they can send back a number. And then here's the response back that we sent. Hey Scott, thanks for responding. Let me know in the chat, can you guys hear this? To Just my email, so I wanted to send Quick over yes, some can. things. Um, I took a look at the Outdoor cool. Voices site, had some things I wanted to show you. And also I pulled up some other outdoor brands that I wanted to dig through as well. So let's uh, let's dig in here. So one thing I noticed on your site, everything looks great. We're big fans of the product. And one of the things I noticed is that if someone has questions that might pop up about a product, um, if someone needs help buying something, um, there isn't a way for them to directly interact with someone uh, via chat. And if they go to the help page, it looks like they can send you an email and they can also open up uh, a video chat. And when we do this,
Yeah, video chat is unavailable. So one of the things I want to point out, because uh, we do some work with the North Face, Keen, and also Columbia, uh, one of the things that they're doing, and one of the things that we have found uh, just through the work that we're doing is that customers are, if they're not able to find quick answers to their questions, they're 31% uh, more likely to tab hop to a competitor's website to find something similar. So if they go to a website like Columbia, for example, one thing they're able to do, even if it's with a chat bot, is they can... Okay, help me out of the chat here. What are you guys picking up so far with the video? What do you... like? Think about the principles that I'm using here. What are you guys picking up about the approach? Yeah, it's tailored. Yeah, it's personal. Yeah, maybe creating a little bit of FOMO. I showed them something that they didn't know, Scott says. Yeah, compelling data. So you guys notice that I'm calling out what I see as a problem, but I'm not being super accusatory about it, though. I'm not saying because you don't have this, you're an idiot, which... Some, we don't always directly say things like that as salespeople, but sometimes what we do is try to make the prospect feel dumb or stupid, or what we say ends up making them feel like that. <laughs> so that's not the goal here. The goal is to educate. Yeah, and this is a three minute video. So I'm really starting with what is the current state? And you can also think about current versus future state, or you can think about old way versus new way. Right, so I'm comparing them to other people like them. All right, let's keep going. And speak and get their questions answered uh, immediately. And oftentimes too, what companies like Keen, if we click on the help here, they're actually open seven days a week and they'll reach out when they're back online. But there's a bunch of other stuff here in the help center around how people can get help through live chat. And then if we look at the North Face too, there's some other kind of interesting things coming on. We look at the Help Center. Again, there's ways for people to submit forms. There's ways for them to online chat, chat with a virtual assistant. Um, so the reason why I'm bringing this up to you is that you guys are obviously doing some great things in Outdoor Voices. Um, but if you guys were to implement things like chat and have ways to answer customers' questions, especially outside of business hours, we're actually seeing a really big uh, increasing conversions. Okay. So that's one style of video that you can send, right? So what I want you to think about is a couple things. One, if you sell a product or service where you can visually see the problem that the prospect is having, I know not all of you are in, in the position to do that. I'm going to talk about what you can do instead, but Think about if I sell something where I can go on a website or look at a job posting or some sort of thing that as I'm doing research, I can see problems in the way that they're currently doing things. This is a really great way to point it out. So a lot of you are selling tools where you can go onto a page, a website, an Amazon listing, whatever it is, and you can visually show the prospect the problem and compare them to other people in their space. I was pretty aggressive in this one in that I compared them to direct competitors. That may or may not be a good choice depending on who you're reaching out to. So think about who also plays in their space that's also non-competing. So for example, if I reach out to Nordstrom, mentioning that we also work with Target, they're not really directly competing with each other. So it doesn't need to be quite as direct <laughs> as this, I guess is what I'm saying. Yes, show the problem the prospect has, educate, show them how you do it, etc. So the last part of this video that I couldn't play is just talking about how we help those companies, right? So this is an example, I call this the hand raiser. This is a really, really cool technique that you can use that this, you don't really need to personalize this email much. You fire it off and then you only send videos to people that respond to them. Okay, here's one that's probably going to be applicable to everyone on the call. The, I call this the one, the showing you I did my homework. It's very similar to your email messaging. Assuming that your emails are decent, you simply take what you normally would have said in an email and repurpose it into a video and then narrate 
the research that you did. So this is the same video I put up on LinkedIn. And some of you guys here might have might have seen it. So this is not the actual video that was sent to Lee. Um, I recreated, so I, I worked with my client and I helped them create this video approach. And then I recreated it here so that I could share it with you guys. So let me share this. Lee, what's going on? Jason here. Uh, I wanted to put together this quick video for you. Um, notice that you're the SVP of Transportation and Global Logistics at Nordstrom. And I was doing a little bit of research just into your you know, Q4 results. And one thing I noticed, I'm sure that you're well aware of, is that a big part of your market strategy that's been generating a lot of sales for you guys is around customer convenience. So how do we get things to people faster? So one day faster average shipping time. And how do we get the product um, multiple times throughout the day to be available for same day pickup. It's something I've seen a lot across uh, retailers like. So I just want to, because a couple, uh, John, you commented on it. The way that I found this was there, Nordstrom's obviously a publicly traded company. I used a tool called seekingalpha.com to get their quarterly earnings reports. It's not something that you have to use Seeking Alpha for necessarily. You can go to their website. Um, any company that's funded, even if they're not publicly traded, will usually have an investor's page. So I'm looking for signs where they're talking about what their focuses are. That's where I got this. Like Nordstrom. And in this position, usually, and this is what I'm curious if you guys are experiencing this, is that a lot of what I hear from, you know, folks like yourself in logistics, you know, transportation, that sort of thing. It's, you know, how do we deliver on these customer promises that we're making? Um, and with the market being as unpredictable as it is right now, how do we do that in standard budget? and make sure that the things that we're using to attract customers are not the things that really eat into our profit margins. Um, some of the things that I typically hear from folks, and again, I'm not sure if you're dealing with this, are that um, you know, executing this type of plan requires a lot of manual work and spot checks from your team where you're constantly putting out to bid or putting out RFPs to get the best deals possible, just to make sure that, again, you can you know, deliver on those promises but um, also do it in a way that's profitable. And that just becomes a lot of extra manual work. If that's something you're dealing with, I'd love to share with you what you know, non-competing companies that we work with like Target and you know, other retail brands. Okay, you guys kind of get in the gist here? Like with this video, this is very similar to the type of talk track that I might have on an email or through my cold call talk track. It's personalization, some sort of trigger, uh, empathy, I talk to a lot of people like you and in these positions, they tell me that they're focused on this and sometimes they run into these problems and then relevant results, how we can help you, right? That's the reply method. If you guys have checked that out, the email structure are relevant results, E empathy, P personalization, L laser focus, Y you oriented. It's the same messaging structure. And it's in kind of reverse order. You start with the personalization, empathy, relevant results. It's the same order. So one, one of the things that I just like so want to stress with video is it's just a different medium. This happens to be a webinar. I could do something similar like this in podcast form. I could write a long article with all of this stuff. It's the same content repurposed across a different medium. That's all video is. You don't really need to do a lot of things different outside of the contextual, you know, hey, if I'm recording a video, I need to, you know, look at the camera instead of, you know, looking at my keyboard or looking at my other screen, right? Besides the contextual things, the message, if it's a solid one, you're just repurposing it across another medium, okay? So I just wanna really, really stress that. Uh, let me reshare this. So, that's a type of video that you can send where you just, you're showing the prospect that you did your homework. So Blake, you said in this example, are you hitting them cold? Yes. So in this example, what I'm doing is that might be this second email. I'm dropping this video into that email because they opened the first email. This would be an example of something I would send to people that are opening emails. Yep. Good question, Blake. So this one's probably gonna be more applicable. So my guess is that if you're here on this webinar, I mean, I hope you are. I hope you're researching prospects before you email them, doing a little bit of account research, 
spending some time customizing the message. My point is that if you're already doing that, just literally narrate that in a video, right? Narrate what you found, how you came to the conclusion that you did, all of that stuff. These two videos so far, these are the number one and two videos that I suggest getting started with. Okay, so now we have one that I call the mechanic and you already kind of saw a variation of this in the first one. The mechanic, what I want you to think about is, you know, a mechanic, when you take your car and they run some sort of diagnostic or test on the car, and they'll usually tell you what's wrong with the car. And if you go to a bad mechanic, they'll tell you a bunch of stuff that's wrong and charge you, like overcharge you to fix it. If you go to a good mechanic, they'll tell you if the oil needs to be changed or what filters need to be changed or, you know, I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about when it comes to cars. So I'll stop there. Like a mechanic runs a test, right? So. This is something that you can do. If you can run some sort of test or diagnostic on what the prospect is doing right now, this works pretty well too. So let me share this video. So this is a guy, Lou Casados. He works for a company called Channel Advisor and he shared this video with me and I thought it was really cool. So this is literally the email that he sent right here. And he got a response in like an hour to book a meeting, but here's the, here's the video. It's pretty cool. $999, oh, $1,000. Oh, hey there. <laughs> hey, Dan, sorry about that. Got to get a pump in whenever you can, you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, we've never met before. My name is Lou Casados, uh, reaching out to you from Channel Advisor. Uh, listen, I'm a huge fan of Ghost products. They've changed the way that I work out. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, I want to get them into the hands of every single American um, who's in the gym. So that being said, you guys are having a big problem right now when it comes to Amazon advertising. So currently right now, your brand name is being uh, what's called conquested on Amazon. Actually, you know what? Let me just show you. Hold on. Okay. And we're... So right off the bat, I don't know about you guys. One thing that really sticks out to me is he's got his personality in here and he is super confident. <laughs> the dude is super confident. And this really helps to make a really good first impression. He's got their website opened up in the background of the video. Like this is just killer. Back. <laughs> so um, if I go to Amazon, right? Just like 51% of Americans do um, when they're buying something. And I search ghost pre-workout. Okay, this is what comes up. So right off the bat, a couple things are alarming. First thing right here is what I'm talking about, right? This is called a sponsored brand advertisement. And the way this works is that brands, only brands, um, bid on certain keywords. So that way when someone searches a specific um, keyword or combination of keywords, like for example, ghost pre-workout, they are bidding a certain amount of dollars and they're paying anytime somebody clicks um, on that. So what this means is this company, Optimum Nutrition, understands and knows the value of your brand name knows that people are coming to Amazon and searching specifically for ghost pre-workout with the hopes that when they do search that, their product is found and they're able to steer you away um, from ghost. How cool is this video? You know, he's, uh, and you, a couple of you guys have commented on it. Yeah, Alex said, what's up, Alex? He said, uh, and he explains what conquesting means. So what's really interesting in this is he took a really educational approach around the problem. He didn't just say, hey, you got this problem. He talked about why it's happening, what he looks for, how their competitors are taking advantage of their Amazon placement. Yeah, Stacy not explains, shows. Yeah, you know, one thing I wanna comment on too, this is a good reminder for me, it, his energy level and his enthusiasm. I think I could do a better job of that. You know, with the videos that I send to prospects being way more energetic, enthusiastic around, you know, what it is that you see, how fired you are to help them fix it, all of that enthusiasm. If you can get that to come through on the video, which is tough because I can do that here in a webinar because there's an audience here. I can do it in a training call, but in a video where you're not in front of a live audience, it can be kind of hard. So he, he does that really, really well. And that's something that um, I think I could work on. So let's keep going. Uh, I'm looking at time here. We got about eight minutes left. So the LinkedIn hover video. So this is a type of video that you can send to a prospect. This is actually one of my clients now. Jennifer, so if someone accepts your connection request on LinkedIn, you could send them a video like this. 
And notice that I'm using Vidyard, the screen sharing. Jennifer, Mode what's going on? Here. Thanks for accepting my connection request. Uh, I was reaching out. I noticed that you look like looks like you manage a group of uh, account executives over there on the healthcare you know side of things. And one thing that stuck out to me about your experience is that um, you sort of worked your way up. Um, through Medallia and have experience, you know, being on the selling end of that company, now being in a leadership position. And uh, I was reaching out, I'm not sure if you experienced this or not as an account executive, but one of the things I always hear from sales leaders is, you know, the SDRs and the BDRs are doing quite a bit of outbound, you know, for the team, but we really need the account executives to self-source. So they need to be good at prospecting, doing outbound, uh, filling their own pipeline, that sort of things. And it just gets really tough when they have very little time in the day, they get mixed up in deals. And one of the ways that we're helping, you know, other software companies like Medallia is enabling these reps through, you know, playbooks, giving them really concrete, you know, skills, tactics, strategies, that sort of things to land uh, meetings. So I wanted to share some ideas with you and some work we're doing with some similar companies in the space and see if you're interested in connecting. Let me know. Um, I put some times into the LinkedIn message here that we very simple yeah uh the right circle that it doesn't have anything to do with the video that's that's a apollo extension in the video so yeah this is just that's all you got to do you guys when a prospect accepts your connection request boom you could do that right send a quick video back to them um personalize it etc there's one last one we don't have time to share but you'll get a chance to look at it and this is the one i call the value share so if you guys do any kind of account research or put together any sort of you know, this maybe more applies to enterprise and strategic folks if you're on this show uh, on the webinar today is if you put together some good research and an account hypothesis before you reach out to an account you do all this research and you know kind of hypothesize what you think they might be having problems with and the business case and that sort of thing uh this guy jordan here shares that so that's a pretty good you know kind of technique that you can use as well um okay so i'm going to share this with you guys in the chat so that you have it. So we got all of our stuff in video here. Um, I do encourage you guys also, we do have a program called Outbound Squad. So if you are if you liked what you saw today and you wanna like actually get coaching around this, get some better course content, we've got a community of about 80 badasses in there too. It's application only. So if you're looking for some more help with that, I, there's a link here that you can check Outbound Squad out as well. Um, but I'm gonna drop that into the chat. And it's view only, so make sure that you save your own copy. Okay, so I got a couple minutes here. What I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna answer a couple questions. So in the chat, what I saw, so Jennifer, you asked, have you had any problems with the video getting stopped by spam filters? Abs absolutely, that is a problem. So the way that you can circumvent that is by not putting a video in the very first email that you send the prospect. So I, I want that first email to be delivered and to go through. Every email preceding that email will have a much more li higher likelihood of going through and being delivered if the first one goes through. So I tried not to send videos in the first emails to prospects or any links really for that matter. Um, okay, and let me look in the Q&A. We talked about background, we talked about green screens. Yeah, Steve, you asked, what is the secret of being able to look forward then looking at the monitor on the side for notes? I try not to really, you know, hide it. So if I need to look over at a note, I'll just look down or look over. Say, hey, Steve, was reaching out. Uh, I saw this, this, and that. And one of the things I noticed when I looked at your site was this. Um, you can use a sticky note too, and you can put it up here if you want. I don't think anyone's accepting, expecting, excuse me, uh, perfection. But what people are expecting is for you not to be looking down like this, reading off of something or looking over at your other monitor the entire time. So it's okay to glance, look up, look down, whatever it might be. Don't need to aim for perfection. Um, okay, let me see. Yeah, I do, Blake. I'm looking right right there right now, right through the barrel of the camera. That's that's I do recommend that. Okay, Sam, another thing too, when it comes to deliverability of videos that I would focus on, Sam uh, Paint, I think is how you pronounce your last name, asked about it is if you try connecting with a prospect on LinkedIn, send the video through LinkedIn. That has a 100% deliverability rate. 
So if you're prospecting into IT or security type folks, that's probably going to be the only way that you can really get videos to them or for them to open up videos. So connect on LinkedIn, share the, the video through LinkedIn. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think I answered your question, Jason Savage. Yeah, I think I got, yeah. So Tyler, you said any generic videos you make for scale, I would just use that GIF for scale. Um, there are some other ways that you could do it that are kind of complicated to do, but I, I'm not a really a big fan of not being genuine in the video or pretending that it's personalized when it's not. Um, okay. I think I got everyone's question to you guys. This is super fun. Appreciate the engagement. You guys check out that deck that I shared or the worksheets, excuse me. If you're interested in outbound squad, like apply, there's a link there in that deck for it. Um, let us know. We'd love to work with you. If you're, you know, someone that's super ambitious, wants to crush it, and you want to invest in yourself for sure, I, we, I'd love to talk to you. And if you're just getting a ton of value out of the free stuff, keep coming to that too. So we'll get a replay over to you in a couple of days. Thanks everyone. You guys are awesome. We'll see ya.